mean, the universe is so vast that it would be self-centered to say that there aren't any other life forms out there. If extraterrestrial life is discovered, it will prove that religion is unreliable because we will not be so sacred or important as we made ourselves out to be. I don't think that the discovery of aliens would have any impact on religious belief because if God created our life, he can create life anywhere within the universe and it doesn't make us any less significant. The discovery of extraterrestrial life would harm religion no more than the discovery of a new bacteria. If superior extraterrestrial life was found, this would show that humans aren't special. We're not the pinnacle of creation. We're just not that important. I want to believe there's aliens, and if an alien came down to me and said, I'm smarter than you, I'd say, OK, mate, I agree with you, you're smarter than me, but I could also find you someone else on this earth that's smarter than me. When thinking about the universe, uh, one can't help wondering whether there is life out there. As far as our solar system is concerned, the, the planet circling our sun, there might be some forms of very primitive life. We, we should have the answer to that quite soon as a result of planned space probes. But not intelligent life. No, if ET exists, it must be on a planet going around some other star. And there's no shortage of those. One of the fastest growing developments in modern day astronomy is the location of these planets. Several hundred have been found and oh, the tally increases weekly. Most of these extrasolar planets or exoplanets, they'll not be habitable like most of the planets in the solar system. But the law of averages would say that there are out there many, many Earth-like planets planets where intelligent life could flourish. Which is not to say that it has. So, a big question is whether or not there is extraterrestrial intelligent life. If so, what is it like? Well, evolution on Earth took a very, very long time. Billions of years. So on some other planet, it has only to get fractionally ahead of, uh, of what happened here on Earth for E.T. to have reached our level of intelligence oh, a long, long time ago. Which means by now, they're probably way ahead of us. Or are they? The human race got this far in intelligence because in the past there was survival value in having a superior intelligence. You had a better chance of surviving to the point where you could mate and pass on your superior genes. But does that still apply today? You know, do, do the more intelligent people have more children than the, the less intelligent? If anything, I'd, I'd, I'd have thought it was the other way around. After all, the more intelligent you are, the, well, the better paid job you're likely to have. And statistics show that the higher your standard of living, the fewer children you're likely to have. And if that's true of us, perhaps it's also true of E.T.? On the other hand, when E.T. reached our stage of development, it would know all about uh, DNA and genetic engineering. For all we know, they might be heavily into genetically engineering designer babies, designed to have superior intelligence. A case of directed evolution, rather than evolution by, by natural selection. In which case, yes, they will be vastly superior to us. But then there is something else we need to take into account. When they reach our stage, they discover nuclear power. In a comparatively short time, they might blow themselves up. Perhaps that's the fate of all intelligent species throughout the cosmos. They reach the stage that we're at, then oh, that's it. No further improvement. So, which of these various scenarios is right, if any? How can we find out? Well, pay E.T. a visit. No, hardly. The distances are just too great. Space travel is not the answer. 
No, the, the only practical approach is to search the sky for, for signals, intelligible signals that might indicate that ET is, is trying to communicate with us. Searches like that have been carried out for many years by the SETI program, the Search for Extraterrestrial Intelligence, but so far without success. So, is there intelligent life out there? I think the universe is so vast that it would be self-centred to say that there aren't any other life forms out there. If Rachel is right, how does that affect religion and how we see ourselves? I don't think that the discovery of aliens would have any impact on religious belief because if God created our life, he can create life anywhere within the universe and it doesn't make us any less significant. But Charlotte disagreed. If superior extraterrestrial life was found, this would show that humans aren't special. The possibility that the universe might be teeming with intelligent life is well, it's a sobering thought. You know, One can't help but feel small. You know, why, why would God take a personal interest in me? and he has so many others to deal with. Actually, there's nothing fundamentally new about this. After all, how does God relate to the seven billion or so people living on planet Earth? You know, for God to take a personal interest in, in each and every member of the human race means he has some totally different way of doing it to how we relate to each other. No, a, a more powerful challenge than, than mere numbers is the possibility of E.T. being vastly superior to us in intelligence. Wouldn't God value a superior form of E.T. more highly than us? Well, it certainly takes a certain level of intelligence for there to be a spiritual dimension to life, you know, to be able to formulate questions such as, well, you know, what is the purpose of life? Uh, and being able to enter into a, a meaningful relationship with God. But, but once a species has achieved that, that basic level of intelligence, is there necessarily any further correlation between superior intelligence and, and superior spiritual qualities? After all, we, we all know of very clever people who don't appear to have much, if any, spiritual dimension to their lives. They're, they're totally bound up seeking fame and fortune and celebrity and, and power to the exclusion of just about everything else. And at the opposite end of the spectrum, there are those who are, are not clever. They, they might have a low IQ, and yet, and yet they possess deep spiritual insights. St. Peter, a lowly fisherman, no intellectual, yet Jesus chose him to be the rock on which to build the church. In any case, how would one measure a superior spirituality? And Jesus said, greater love can no man have than to lay down his life for another. And we know of many martyrs who are already demonstrating that the humans have reached that level of spirituality. They're prepared to lay down their life for their religious beliefs. So how could a superior form of E.T. do better than that? Or, or could they? Is, is, is there a level of spirituality far in excess of anything achieved by the most devout human? A level that is inconceivable to us? Now, what, what would such a degree of spirituality be like? Finally, the existence of E.T. would pose a special problem for, for us Christians. Christians hold that the eternal Son of God took on human form. He became Jesus in order to be our Saviour. But what possible relevance could the life of Jesus on planet Earth have for E.T.? They're not even going to know that he existed. Will they, in fact, need their own saviour? No. If so, does the eternal Son of God come in, in different forms, a whole series of incarnations throughout the cosmos? And if you follow a different religion, well, well will E.T. need specific E.T.-adapted examples of your, of your special people, prophets, saviours, gurus, holy men? So, in summary, what impact would the discovery of extraterrestrial intelligence have on religion? How would such a discovery alter your assessment of the importance, or otherwise, 
Papa's Funerals.